As Task Force 39 approached Empress Augusta Bay, low dark clouds hung over the formation and it was raining steadily. At 0100, general quarters were sounded. Plane reported contact with an enemy force of eight to 12 ships, bearing approximately 325, distance 85 miles, course 125, estimated speed 25 knots. 0114, friendly planes to port. We increase speed to 28 knots. Distant flare reported on starboard bow. Probably a snooper over our mine layers. Flare, two points on starboard bow, about 30,000 yards. Ships contacted, bearing 016 at 20,000 yards. Identified on TBS as the Renshaw and mine layer group retiring southward. Unidentified plane over mine layers. Renshaw reports she is bringing a snooper with her. At bearing 328, distance 28,000 yards, is a rain squall. There is also something just beyond, which may be the NIPS. At 0227, there is a definite contact bearing 308, distance 38,000 yards. Contact is verified and designated enemy. The task force commander has the ball. From now on, the course of action will result in the success or failure of the engagement. According to battle plan, destroyer attack units were to go in upon getting contact and approximate torpedo solution. Osborne has the contact. 45th Division heading in. There now appear to be several ships in enemy group. Estimated course, 150, speed 29. Desdiv 46, ordered to countermarch to 180. Foot misunderstood and turned at once ahead of the other three destroyers. Cruisers execute turn 18. A second enemy group is contacted at 278. Then a third group at 272. Each of the three groups seems to be composed of four ships. The northern group appears to have changed course to the right, then shortly later back to the southeast again. It is quite possible that the enemy is zigzagging. Comdes Div 46 has now made contact and requests permission to be released for attack. This request was difficult for CTF to approve, well knowing that his forces would be divided and not knowing what future developments would take place. Nevertheless, Desdiv 46 was ordered to attack enemy rear group. The destroyers turned by column movement to course 270 and increased speed to 34 knots. Foot continues southward, separated from her unit. Cruisers are waiting word from Division 45 that torpedoes are on their way. From a distance 5,600 yards on the port bow of a northern enemy group, Desdiv 45 fires a half salvo of torpedoes and executes turn nine to retire on course 050. Claxton comes on in and fires a second half salvo at what she believes to be a cruiser and turns to a position astern of Stanley. To quote from the report of Comdes Div 45, we lived years waiting for the torpedoes to explode. It was probably only half a minute after firing that the squadron commander and the flag captain started to commiserate with each other as to how we could have possibly missed. We regretted driving into such close range where the enemy might have sighted us as we fired. About one minute after our fish were launched, reports were received that our targets showed faint flashes, which observers thought were torpedo tubes firing the enemy exploits its torpedo menace at the first opportunity. The enemy did not open with gunfire, nor did any of their torpedoes hit, although there were several reports of torpedoes passing close on parallel courses. So Division 45 stood on its retirement heading of 050 until it had opened to 10,000 yards instead of turning to a firing course at 8,000, as originally intended. 
It was estimated that six minutes would be required for our torpedoes to reach the target. However, after three and a half minutes, CIC reported that the enemy group had turned to starboard, indicating our torpedo attack had been detected. So the cruisers were ordered to open fire. It was a great relief to come as near 45 when three explosions, small but definite, were seen on the northern Jap group indicating they had unsuccessfully turned away from our torpedo attack. Shortly thereafter, two other explosions occurred, which were later revealed as hits, resulting from the second half salvo fired by Claxton. The cruisers having previously opened fire, Division 45 now joined in. The cruisers all firing came to course 210, the enemy replied to our fire almost immediately, but his opening salvos were short and consistently ahead of his targets. Flares two points forward of the starboard beam. Desde 46 executes turn nine to avoid these flares and to get out of the cruiser line of fire. This was a break for Foote, who swings west to rejoin. The task force now being divided, the chance of embarrassing one of our groups has materialized. The Denver is forced to shear out of formation to avoid Foote, who is crossing to rejoin her division. Enemy fire is still short. Cruisers nearing maximum range come to course 230. Montpelier reports her target dead in the water. One destroyer steamed off at high speed to the north. It is believed that two ships of this group were severely damaged in the torpedo attack. A fourth target has appeared to the southwest. 